Oh, nice. Look at that. I get a lot of emails asking questions about the hydraulic ram pump. Sometimes even up to five and six new emails a day. One of the most common questions is, can this pump work in a river with no feet of head? And sadly, the answer is no. So today I'm going to be trying out something called a river pump. It does not uh, operate like the ram pump does. It works off of uh, a circular tube gulping air and water as it rotates. So it's uh, time to get started. Now this is my first attempt at making one of these pumps. So let me go over, your, go over the parts that I think I'm gonna need. I've got a two inch to three inch reducer a three inch to four inch reducer, and then this guy, which is a four inch to six inch uh, reducer. I've got 40 foot of three eighths inch tubing. I've got uh, this, which is three inch to uh, threaded, so socket to threaded. And then I've got this two inch to three inch here. It's gonna fit in there. And then a threaded uh, three inch cap. Um, there. It's all going to make sense here in a little while. Then I've got some uh, adapters for the tube. So this takes the tube here and it connects it to uh, this garden hose adapter. I've got a quick release. Now this is the important part. This quick release swivels whenever it uh, is connected. Or at least that's the hope. So we're going to give that one a try here in a little bit. See how well it works. And lastly, I've got uh, this connector to hook up both pieces of tube together. Along with those connector pieces, I've got a six inch pipe, four, three, and two, and then some of this uh, pipe insulator for uh, a flotation device. So let's get started building this pump. Now, I've never made one of these before, so not exactly sure how this is gonna go, but first thing I'm gonna do is cut down these pipe a little bit because they're too long. So I'm thinking if I do each of these at about eight inches, then I should be able to work with this all right. So I'm going to mark all these out and then use the angle grinder to cut them down. If you're following along, be sure to use glasses and earplugs. I got those four pieces cut down. Now I'm gonna put them together. So I think for now, I'm not gonna use cement. I'm just gonna stick these together. And if they come apart, then later I'll use the cement. Now, if you could have found one of these couplings that didn't have these gaps, it would be much better. But uh, if they look like that, I couldn't find one though. So, what I'm doing is basically just making some kind of cone. And if you can find materials that make a better cone for less money, then uh, please feel free. All right. So I'm just pushing all these together here. All right, so basically it's a giant cone. It steps down as it goes. So the next thing I want to do is, I guess, put this on. So this first piece here just reduces or goes back up here uh, to this piece. Let's see about hammering that down a little bit. Now we're going to be working with this cap because this swivel piece needs to be in this cap. Uh, it needs to be able to swivel freely um, on the top of this. So let's see what we can do about that. So these are the components we need to work with. Now this piece here needs to go onto this like that. Okay. 
So this front piece is what's going to spin, hopefully, as our swivel. So the threads on here, I'm thinking, if we can drill the exact size of this into here, then this will fit in here, and then this piece will fit on top of that. And I may have to uh, super glue or something to keep these from going through, but we'll see what we can do. So let's find the size of this and drill through that cap. I found that the 7 eighths bit was the size we needed, so let's see about getting a hole drilled in here. Let's see how well our piece fits in there. All right, so we got our hole here. I'm gonna put this on the back side, and it looks like it's got just a couple of threads there that'll reach out. So let's see here. Oh yeah, nice. That's gonna do very nicely here. And it keeps it in there because of the size of that extra piece there. All right, well, there's one piece down. Now, I've got to work on the blades that are going to make this whole thing spin. So let's do that next. Now it's time to get creative. We need fan blades for the front of this pump to uh, spin it. So what I've done is I've calculated the um, circumference and I've got this piece of paper with lines marked for every place I'm going to need to cut. So I'm just going to line this up here so it should come out pretty close there and it does. So I'm going to see here, put a mark, turn it, put a mark, turn it again, put a mark, and should be one more over here. All right, that will give us four equal blades along this pipe. The next thing I want to do is cut this down a little bit because that would be too big of a blade sitting in our water. So let's see what we think is a good size here. So if we did eight inches, that'd be another 16 total. So I think that's pretty good size to uh, spin around in the water. So once again, let's make lines. Say we're going to cut this in half at eight. I got these four blades cut. So the idea is that this piece will have blades on it. So I may have to come back later and reshape these blades for a better uh, spin. So what I'm gonna do is just put uh, a nut and bolt in each one of these to hold it in place. And we'll just, uh, this is just a first test of course, so we'll see how it does. So I'm just going to put this in here and, uh, and make a hole. And now for this piece. Let's see how well these two match up. Alright, so I got this piece here and this one here. So I'm going to put these together and then get uh, this piece. Uh, I'm seeing a problem already. I didn't uh, cut far. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, maybe so. <laughs> That's close. Let's see if I can push this in there a little bit better. May have to uh, tap it in with a hammer. 
I just tightened down this one a bit, and you can see the uh, the concept. So, water comes flowing in, hits this, and causes it to move and rotate. And then, it uh, hits the next one in line. So after it's hit and moved, water hits and moves. So, that's the concept. I'm going to put the rest of these together, and we'll see what it looks like. And the water fan is done. Not 100% balanced, but uh, pretty close to it. I like it. So I'm sure there's some uh, shaving I could do to uh, maybe up on this corner up here to make this uh, the water slide through it better. Because as it is now, I'm pretty sure that corner is going to be a resistance to the next blade coming in. So you know, as water's pushing this way it would need to escape there around that one so I may shave that down later but for now I think that's going to uh, do pretty good so let's see how well it looks on here Oops. there we go right, so let's see which direction it's going to want to spin this water hits there and spins it this way. So there may be an issue of it uh, coming unscrewed here at some point, but uh, hopefully not. So I like it. It's looking nice. These blades probably could have been a little bit bigger to spin this better, but uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, on to the next step. Now our tubing has to somehow get inside of this piece. So what I'm gonna do is just drill right in here okay. then I'm going to angle it down so that tube can attach to the piece inside of here Let's see if that'll work Got it in there. So now I gotta unscrew this again. Let me just pop that off. And then get this piece, this hose, in here. And it's a pretty tight fit. That might be a good thing though. a little tricky of how to get this piece attached in there. Let me come back to this. Hold on one second. Sometimes you just have to turn the camera off and think a second. So I'm going to put this piece here but not totally on and then stick this hose onto that adapter. Make sure it's on there really good. Yeah. Okay, and so now I can screw this piece on here, hopefully. Okay, get that tightened on there. Yeah. Like such. Now I can attach the other pipe back here. Let's see here. That should do it. Now we're good to go. Hook these back up. And like I said, later on I may uh, use cement on some of these. But so now what we're down to is taking our 40 foot uh, uh, hose here, and it's just a matter of wrapping it around. So we need to think here water is going to come in, push this, and it's going to spin this way. So it's turning, uh, yeah, from the back, it's going clockwise. So, which means the hose has got to pick up water. So it's going this way, this 
So if the hose wraps this way, it'll pull water. This is kind of exciting, getting to work with a new idea that we've not touched before. So, yeah, I probably could have pulled that back a little bit more, but I think it's going to be all right. We got a couple of loops there on the smallest size, and we'll make a few loops here of this size. And it may be that a, uh, a larger tubing would have been better, but it's definitely a good first test. Right. Just as before, I drilled a hole and stuck the tube into the end. So you can see I've got all 40 foot wrapped around here now. So the next thing is to get the foam insulation in there and then go toss it in the creek. So I have a feeling that this right here will be something we toy around with when we get out uh, to the water, but for now I'm just going to stick this in here, this, and then maybe double it over. And we'll see how that treats us and see if it floats well enough. So we'll just play around with that when we get to the water.